Hello, uh, I'm recording a very quick video to go over the final writing assignment um, for uh, Phil 101 Summer Semester 2016. Um, this, is, this should be a really straightforward writing assignment. I am giving you a lot of freedom um, to interpret and refine your responses to these questions. I just have some very general parameters. Um, it, to a certain extent, well, it's, I'll just go over what I have on the writing assignment here. It's 1,000 to 1,250 words. It's um, a reflection paper directed towards your choice between three questions, which I'll go over. Um, it, these questions are really general and relate to overarching themes that we've engaged with through the theorists in this course all semester. Um, due date is August 25th. Um, the writing project propos proposal forum is already open. Um, so uh, it's this 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 is, is sort of in the place of a final exam um, for this course and the the one really intensive sort of writing experience that we're going to have um, this semester. So it's due August twenty fifth by eleven fifty five p.m. That's five minutes to midnight. All assi assignments are to be submitted to the Moodle. Um, it, it portal by this date and time. Um, no late assignments uh, because it's a quick semester. As soon as I get them, I have to grade them and turn them around within 48 hours. So um, we don't have all that much in the way of wiggle room. So um, these are really general questions and like I say, you can refine them, you can select some aspect of the theories. It's These aren't you know overview papers, though you should give me enough on each theorist that um, you're choosing um, to um, engage with. So the, the job is your written work must relate to and discuss the work of no less than two figures that we've studied in the course. I find more actually it, it harms the depth of the paper, but less. Uh, well, the problem is it's I want this to be comparative. I want you to insert your position into sort of a comparative analysis of at least two of the theorists that we've studied in this course. You've got a choice of six. So um, choose one of the following um, uh, questions. They all start with the statement, given the arguments studied in this course. All of them start that way. So um, one is describe the most basic nature or condition of the human being. Right? So what are human beings at their most basic. And we just finished studying Hobbes, and Hobbes has a pretty frightening answer to that question. Both Plato and Aristotle um, answer that question. Um, Socrates has a particular answer to that question as well. And as you'll see, both Kierkegaard and Nietzsche um, do as well. So um, you've got a lot to chew on here. So if you choose this question, um, and let's say you choose Aristotle, right? Um, virtue of character would probably be what you would engage with with Aristotle. And let's say you choose Hobbes. Right. Uh, it's his conception of human nature that we're led by appetite and aversion, ultimately directed towards power, um, sensate creatures, and both of them have problems that relate um, to this conception of human nature and prescriptions that uh, arise from their account of what we are at our most basic. Right. So uh, the way you would insert yourself into this, um, this, this argument is who's more correct, Hobbes or Aristotle, or neither, right? for some reason, after you give an adequate account of both Aristotle and Hobbes. Right? Um, question number two, given the argument studied in this course, what should the role of the faculty of reason um, in relation, to, uh, what should be the role of reason in relation to uh, human passions or desires? Now, um, we have just spent on the past four theorists um, quite a bit of time on this very question. Socrates argued that we should be led by reasons and not by feelings or beliefs or opinion or the crowd or anything along those lines. So his position is one where we employ critical reasoning in order to attain justice. In Plato, he gave you that tripartite soul in a three-part schema for how we should relate reason to our various passions. 
right? Um, again, in Aristotle, we find that what's, what's the distinctively human function? It's going to have something to do with the exercise of reason. So it's reason's job to step in and sort out how we want what we want. And again, in Hobbes, we find that reason has a particular status as well. It's a calculative faculty that cause and effect and threaten advantage, right? So interestingly, reason still plays a pivotal role in Hobbes. We're about to turn to two theorists that dispute this uh, has sort of hallowed human faculty, right? Um, Kierkegaard is going to argue that reason can only get us so far and beyond that we need faith. And Nietzsche is actually going to offer quite a succinct critique of the faculty of reason. Um, so you've got a lot to chew on there. So you introduce two positions. This is their position re regarding the faculty of reason. Note that you don't have to give a complete overview of the theories that are being presented by either of the figures that you um, that you choose, just pare it down to that specific position. Right? Then finally, given the argument studied in this course, um, what can we say about the underlying nature of truth? Right? That should be fairly straightforward. Um, not much according to Socrates, but we can relate to it and have a guide or like, relate to the idea of a truth that's out there and have a guide our reasoning and decision making and that sort of thing. Um, Plato says quite a bit more about the underlying nature of truth. Um, Aristotle bases his whole uh, ethics on a metaphysics, which is descriptive, um, it's in my video, um, of uh, the underlying nature of truth. Um, Kierkegaard has a, sort of a theological response, and Nietzsche's got his own particular kind of response as well. So um, you should have a lot to chew on. Uh, present the two positions, ask yourself which one you think is more accurate. If neither of them are all that accurate, um, insert yourself and make an argument to yourself. Um, so for your reference, I've posted a sample structure for philosophy papers to Moodle. This is meant to be a suggestion. I'm not saying present your paper in this way. Um, this is just a method for sorting out ideas. It's one that I have used and um, it's, I find it's helpful to some students who are having difficulty sorting out their ideas and organizing their papers. Um, but by no means is it required. Again, zero tolerance on plagiarism. Um, that's all in the syllabus. Don't do it, finger wag, finger wag. Um, I don't assume we'll have any problems. Um, and if you're unsure how to properly cite, I've given you that link to um, the cite right sort of plagiarism sort of program through the library. And I really look forward to reading these. Um, these are the most interesting part of your work for me uh, throughout the semester. So if you have any questions whatso uh, whatsoever, as always, please get in contact with me and I'll do my best to sort of disentangle notions and clarify expectations. Basically, I ask myself the three questions when I grade these assignments. First, did they get it right? Uh, have you given a faithful interpretation of the theorists in question? Two, is it clear? Right? And three, have you presented a cogent argument? Right? You know, so um, it, it, those are your assessment criteria. Um, anyhow, uh, let me know if you have, uh, have any questions whatsoever, and um, I will do my best to address them. All right, have good days, one for each of you.